Hello everyone, I'm Chris Fernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at your news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City takes its place in the national spotlight once again. The NBC show American Ninja Warrior has been taping episodes in Kansas City featuring Union Station as a backdrop. We will be seen in primetime later this summer. Hi Kansas City, this is Stephanie Scuppum with the Kansas City Film Office at Visit KC. We are lucky to be here behind the scenes at American Ninja Warrior as they set up their show. Now they came in 2015 and we are so glad to have them back in 2017. So what does this mean for Kansas City? Well first of all, it means 6.5 million viewers on NBC get to see two one hour episodes that are exclusively set and feature Kansas City. We love that and we're at a beautiful location. Union Station Kansas City is the front porch of Kansas City so they couldn't be in a better more beautiful place. The other thing it means for us that exposure really elevates our destination with viewers nationwide and potentially globally as well. Um, what they do, um, they bring such a great impact. Their crew is amazing. They're really nice people. They work really hard. They come in droves. I mean, there are so many trucks out here full of workers and equipment, and they come into our city and not only stay in our hotels in over 700 room nights, uh, they go out and enjoy what Kansas City has to offer. They go to baseball games, they go out to dinner and lunch and do activities, and they really, really enjoy our city while they're here. And in addition to all of that, they also make a direct spend into our economy by putting this show on right here in Kansas City and hiring at least 50 local crew. A lot of our uh, union electricians will be working on this show, a lot of our production assistants, and uh, even some of the art department is uh, sourced here locally. And we're so happy to have that happen here. Um, yeah, being in a lot of different cities throughout the United States, um, you know, each one is, is fun in their own right, but um, coming back home to work, it's obviously, um, I'm a little biased, but it's, um, it's great. And it's fun to kind of show off my hometown to a lot of the crew and all that stuff and give them the lowdown on the great spots to check out, the food, the nightlife, all that good stuff. Anyway, there's so many reasons why it's good for us, and we're, we're just so grateful that they're here and that they selected us again. And we really hope they select us over and over and over. Does your company have a visionary idea on how to improve city processes? The annual Innovation Partnership Program is now taking applications. Entrepreneurs will compete to develop, test, and demonstrate solutions for city operations. The 12-week program grants access to city data and infrastructure while providing a test bed for your product or service. After the test period, the city may decide to purchase your company's products or services if it's a good fit and improves overall efficiency. For more information, go to the city's website, kcmo.gov, and enter Innovation Partnership in the search bar. Third District City Council member Jermaine Reed testified before Congress this week about the burden of unfunded mandates from the federal government. Reed was part of a delegation from the National League of Cities. Reed spoke about the economic strain placed on Kansas City and its residents by the Clean Water Act, saying it's important to protect water resources, but that federal funding is needed to relieve the strain on local taxpayers. Kansas City celebrated the installation of 100 miles of water mains this week during a ceremony in the Northland. Check out this field report from Casey Waters' Brooke Givens. In 2012, there were more than 1,800 water main breaks in Kansas City. KC Water needed a solution and created the Water Main Replacement Program. We started this effort a little over four years ago, uh, and it's part of a promise that we made to residents of Kansas City. If they approved a $500 million water revenue bond authorization, we'd start fixing the infrastructure. So that's what we're here to do, to show progress. That progress is this piece of pipe. On Monday, city leaders, KC Water employees, partners, and neighbors signed their name on it. It's the ceremonial 100th mile of the water main replacement program. That's 100 miles of new pipe in the ground and serving Kansas City. It's great to, to measure our progress and to recognize all the hard work that's went into uh, this program and we look for uh, many, many years of ongoing water main replacement to protect the uh, public health and safety of our residents in the future.
In 2016, there were 814 water main breaks, a 56% drop in four years. But the work is far from finished. There are 2,800 miles of water lines in Kansas City. Our target is to replace 1% or 28 miles each year. In 100 years, we start over. To date, KC Water has invested $65 million making sure Kansas Cityans continue to receive safe, clean, and reliable drinking water. This is just a nice way to say today we are actually doing the first 100 miles of an extraordinary opportunity to serve everybody in Kansas City. For KC Water, I'm Brooke Givens. We're here today to uh, take this building behind us and uh, make it disappear and then we're going to come back to the new building that's going to support this great outdoor pool. It looks a little natural there right now, uh, but obviously our plan is to take that uh, 50 meter outdoor pool and turn it into a great aquatic experience for the Northland and the entire Kansas City to enjoy in the summer of uh, 2018. And I'm Mark McHenry, KC Parks and Recreation, and uh, I had the distinct privilege of being involved in this project for a while and uh, also want to give a great deal of credit to the City Council uh, the North Lane leadership with the NNI and of course Kansas City Park Board to make this project come forward. Uh, so many looked at this as what it could be, um, look, remembering what it was and what it could be again. And so I'm so grateful for their tenacity um, and especially the tenacity of someone who, I don't even see her on here, but uh, Anita Gorman over here deserves a great deal of applause. Uh, I, I think she was one who stepped up immediately and asked what we were going to do when the YMCA left. And, and hopefully the answer that we have is, is satisfying. When the council was, was faced with what do we do, what do we do, um, a lot of people got together from the community. Uh, Northland neighborhoods were, were a big, uh, big force in this. And the council decided we need to save this. We need to save this pool and uh, uh, make it something really great for the Northland. So that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we're going to take down the building behind us and then build a new um, uh, facility for swimmers. And then we're going to we're not going to have the indoor pool anymore. We're just going to have the outdoor pool, and this will be the largest pool in Kansas City. So uh, we're excited about that. We're excited to get the kids back in here swimming. And um, thank you all so much for coming out today. There are two things that kills more kids, and we don't teach them how to deal with either one of them. Number one is driving, and number two is swimming. Well, we can address number two here and now. This is something that's very badly needed. We will serve the south end of uh, Clay and Platte counties, both in some otherwise unserved or underserved areas. So I'm very happy for the, for the kids of this area, because now they will have a chance to come here to learn how to swim and have a good time in the summer. It's an athletic event. It'll help them with a lifestyle uh, throughout their lives. So we're very excited about it. So thank you all for being here. Uh, we are excited about saving this pool back here. It's such a neat uh, parcel of land that uh, we talked about Mrs. Gorman and putting her park together here on the two sides. Uh, this is a really neat piece of property and then needs of, the, uh, of a pool in this area. Um, makes this just a perfect project, so we're excited to see this move forward. And uh, we just wanted to thank our partners at NNI and uh, the city to, uh, to help make this happen. Thank you. Well, Alan says bittersweet. I know what bittersweet is. I spent 20 hours a week here at 5 a.m. for about five years while my daughter was a piranha. Uh, I don't know if there are any other piranhas or piranha families here, but this is really a, a place full of fond, wonderful memories, both winter and summer. Uh, it was a year-round facility that, that uh, we really enjoyed uh, participating in. Uh, we're only held back by our imagination and funding and what we can make of this. Um, neighborhoods not only need infrastructure and good housing, they need amenities. If we're going to make our neighborhoods marketable and continue to be marketable, we need things just like this. Um, I also appreciate the Park Department and Park Board um, for making this. I think only Mark McHenry um, could have gotten it for the price that they got it. Um, so 
very much appreciated. But again, thanks for everybody being out here, and thanks for your support of this and NNI. Thanks. I think our next step now is to grab helmets and hammers. Is that how that works, Heidi? Glasses, hats, and hammers. All right, glasses, hats, and hammers. This is the hammer. This is the hat. Federal and local law enforcement from Missouri and Kansas got a chance to talk openly with teenagers about the challenges facing both communities and discuss possible career options. The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department played a big role in the event sponsored by the FBI. Officer Damon Harrell is a recruiter for KCPD. What's going on here today is a community forum that gets together not only local law enforcement, but law enforcement agencies from the FBI, Highway Patrol, and again, local and city municipalities law enforcement. And to get together with the youth of our community to come together and just have them ask questions, any questions they may have regarding law enforcement, what it takes not only to be a police officer, but to not be in trouble with law enforcement and how to react and how to act when confronted or met up with the police officer. Teens asked questions and talked one-on-one -on -one with crime scene investigators, hostage negotiators, and representatives from KCPD Police Athletic League and DARE. 15-year-old Naomi Kramer is a student at Blue Valley Northwest High School and part of the Explorer program. She's interested in the intellectual side of crime fighting. The intelligence and negotiations uh, really uh, interest me a lot because I like the more data stuff you know, learning about the intellectual part of being a police officer. Claire Witt is a junior at St. Teresa Academy and thinks the event is important for all students. I think it's good to just make connections because you never know who you're going to meet and then that'll help you one day in the future. So I think definitely connections and just to kind of open your mind a little bit. Like, that's why I'm visiting everybody's booth because you never know what, you know, you might fall in love with something that you didn't think. The goal of the event was to create dialogue between law enforcement and leaders of tomorrow. All youth 13 and older in high school and college were invited. Officer Harold says jobs are important, but there are other benefits to talking to young people. The biggest benefit is trying to uh, get rid of any preconceived notions they may have about police or contact with the police and how to behave when interacting with the police. And so, you know, not only about jobs, but teaching them how to act and how to talk and the right way to do things. Other agencies represented included the United States District Attorneys of Western Missouri and Kansas, the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department, and the FBI Citizens Academy Association. I'm Officer Mike Motes and have a safe week. Hundreds of residents came out for the Hard to Recycle event on Earth Day. The city provides this service along with several partners to make it easier to recycle and reuse everything from mattresses to bikes. It took place across the street from the Manual Technical Career Center on Truman Road. We're trying to do the right thing by, get, by getting rid of items, hard to recycle items that cannot be put on the curb for recycling. We're trying to divert them from the landfill. So we've teamed up with several vendors, Surplus Exchange, Disabled Veteran, Avenue of Life for mattresses, Truman Habitat Restore for building materials. I think Kansas City is a beautiful city. We have so many wonderful attractions for the public. However, very often we drive up and down the streets. We see waste tires, we see brush, we see clothing, we see household goods. So this is an opportunity to not just 
our residents, but our neighborhood organizations too, to clean up their neighborhood and bring the items to us, and then we can divert them, recycle them, and divert them from the landfill. Recycling is important because there's some great benefits in recycling. One, it conserves natural resources. If we can save some of those natural resources from being used, then we can recycle those things and make them into new products. So basically it conserves energy and natural resources. Also it protects our environment. Tires are very ha hazardous to the neighborhoods. If we can just dispose of them properly, we can prevent the breeding of mosquitoes and we can also remove rodents from our neighborhood. Plus there are huge fire hazards. So recycling tires is very important. Most likely we've, we've diverted over 100 tons of materials from the landfill. So this has been a huge success. The third annual Heritage Week in the West Bottoms kicks off on first Friday, May 5th. This week-long celebration includes street performances as well as historical presentations on Kansas City Jazz, presentations about arts in the West Bottoms, and the future development of this thriving area. Heritage Week wraps up on May 12th with the Wettest Block Soiree, which features music, dinner, and dancing. Come down for Heritage Week, and while you're at it, experience the antique shops, artist studios, historic buildings, and unique ambiance in the West Bottoms. Some events are open to the public and other events are ticketed, so visit the Historic West Bottoms website at hwb-kc.com for more information. Heritage Week is supported by the city's Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. Another project supported by NTDF funds is the collaboration between KC Art in the Park and Art in the Loop. For the second year, these two events have teamed up to create a unique summer experience. This year, musicians take more of a starring role. Now known as Art in the Loop Project Q, this series of events kicks off in May with art installations, performances, and music. It runs through September. Visit artintheloop.com for a complete list of artists and musical performers. City employees braved the brisk, not quite spring weather to take a walk around City Hall for a National Walk at Work Day. The city's Fountain of Health program encourages employees to participate in healthy activities throughout the year. So we are out here for National Walk Day doing our part to uh, help get people into more healthy lifestyles. So we had several people come out from City Hall today doing their walk around Islas Davis Park. It was a great opportunity not only to stretch the legs, but uh, to feel a little bit of that remaining chill uh, before we get into the main part of spring and summer. But uh, this was a great opportunity for us to have a little fellowship, enjoy our time together, and, and exercise a little bit. Break out your party hats and save the date for the KC Streetcar's first birthday party. Saturday, May 6th marks a full year of operation. You are invited to join the celebration at Union Station at 11 a.m. KC Streetcar has delivered nearly 2 million rides and sparked nearly $2 billion in economic development projects. Those are milestones worth celebrating. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. You can watch this report and all of our city videos on demand by going to our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow the city and several of our departments and programs on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. I'm Chris Hernandez. Enjoy this gorgeous Kansas City spring weather.